Hi everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today's video is based on a question, and that is the question of what do you do if you feel broken as an INFJ, or how can you deal with and unbreak yourself if you struggle with low self image, low self worth, imposter syndrome, negative feelings, uh, feelings of failure, feelings of uh, victimhood, feelings of martyrdom, feelings that you're not good enough, feeling that. Uh, you are being used, feeling that you've been used up, feeling that you have uh, lost yourself, feeling that you have uh, failed yourself. I ask these really hard questions and I hope you will tune in even despite what's happening in the world today because you know during these times, during the COVID-19 crisis and everything that's happening in the world, I think a lot of people will come to neglect their mental health and well-being. That makes sense, you know. During times like these, we are less interested in personal growth content and uh, matters of the heart and of who we are and of our identity uh, because we have no time to consider these things. You know, on Maslowian uh, scales, uh, need focus on survival trumps every other need and that includes the need for self-actualization so if we feel threatened on a level of survival or our physical needs or our most acute situation we lose focus immediately on the question of personal growth and where we are headed in life and who we are we lose who we are because we are prepared to compromise and do whatever it takes to survive our thoughts go to survival not into uh, victory or into uh, you know uh, winning or being the best version of yourself or hitting an understanding or growing yourself on some level or overcoming some kind of trauma we live despite of these traumas we continue despite of these feelings we move on despite of these struggles and we put them on the back burner as we thought I think what is my economy like how is my finance situation how is my work what can I do to stay and keep my job if I've lost my job what can I do from here how can I move on so I have uh, come to identify with the INFJ personality type as my own for a very long time and uh, I've gotten a lot of value from studying and uh, reflecting on what it is like to be an INFJ and from uh, going through and to thinking about and hearing about how other INFJs in the world have it. And uh, I can only speak from my own perspective in this video, but what I can say is when I feel the most broken, I feel... I feel like a fraud. When I feel the most broken, I feel that I am unable to meet my own expectations and my own ideals. And you know, I have strong ideals and high expectations. I always expect the best of myself and I expect the best of myself to other people, to be uh, somebody important to other people, to be somebody that matters, to be somebody that, that helps other people, to be somebody that supports others. But I can only really feel that this feeling, this idea of myself is slipping. I can feel that I know that I'm not that person. I can feel that I am doubting myself. I can feel that I am not sure in myself. I am not uh, trusting in myself anymore. I can feel that uh, I am confused about where I'm headed in life and my future. And often that's how it starts. When I feel the most broken, I feel the most lost. I immediately lose trust in a future that normally I believe in so strongly. I have a sense of vision and most of the time I feel very confident about it. But when I feel broken, that all goes on into the window. It, uh, it's the first thing I will compromise on. I will immediately start thinking about compromising on my vision. I will immediately start thinking about uh, uh, closing down my channel, uh, giving up on creative projects on stopping any kind of uh, intellectual work that I'm doing because I will feel that I have failed in it or that I am not going to be successful in it or that it will not lead anywhere anymore. And uh, I have to be very mindful of these kind of feelings uh, because I've had them for a very long time as far as I can remember even I, I had it even when I was a kid. 
and I struggled with that even when I was five years old. And uh, so I have to be mindful of the fact that uh, these are feelings I cannot give up on or give in to, I'd rather. <laughs> these are feelings that I, I was at a Freudian slip or a Jungian slip, not sure if what, what a Jungian slip it is. Anyways, uh, I have to uh, let go of those feelings and not give in to those feelings and I have to proceed because, you know, who am I without my future? Who am I without my vision? Who am I without my ideas? And who am I without my sense of self and identity? So I have to be very mindful of my own identity and uh, INFJs have to learn to respect the introverted feeling and uh, that means you have to always maintain a base level of self-respect no matter what you do. I think uh, if you lose self-respect as an INFJ or if you lose uh, touch with your ethics or your values, I think it's like giving up on your inner child. It's like uh, losing something essential about yourself, but it's also something very easy to compromise on. I feel that INFJs compromise very easily on their inner child and their own personal needs, even though they have a lot of personal needs. I think INFJs are one of uh, the top personality types who have the most need for personal space and identity and value and ethics. You know, INFJs need to feel that they have a system of ethics and a sense of who they are and the sense of their identity. And uh, INFJs need to spend a lot of time every day nurturing that sense. So you need to spend a lot of time taking care of yourself and protecting your boundaries and creating a safe space for yourself. And you have to create an environment of harmony and balance where you feel you can be yourself without feeling judged or pressured or attacked by other people. So you need to work on your personal peace of mind and uh, you have to build an environment that supports you and that you feel supported in as an INFJ in order to feel healthy and to keep yourself from feeling crushed. And so what can crush an INFJ is losing that space and I think if you start feeling crushed or broken as an INFJ that's where you need to go to first. Did I give up on myself? When did I give up on myself? When did I stop caring for myself? When did I stop becoming mindful of my personal needs? When did I stop listening to myself? And was it that time when I put other people before myself? Was it that time when I put people before myself all day, all the time, constantly? Was it that time when I thought I had it to be everywhere at once? Was it that time where I thought I had to be there for everyone who was struggling? Because, you know, in these times everyone is struggling. And so you can feel that you are constantly doing everything you can to be there for everyone. And in those times it's, it's especially ne easy to say, oh, my own needs are less important right now. My own health is less important right now because there are so many people out there that are struggling. There are so many people going through hardships. So what can I do? How can I move forward? What can I do for myself? Nothing. There is no time. Other people come first. So as an INFJ, uh, when you start feeling broken, uh, when you start feeling like, oh, I'm not who I used to be, I'm a fraud, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, uh, ask yourself um, to be realistic about the expectations you have for yourself. A lot of time, um, INFJs can fall into very unrealistic, uh, irrational beliefs, and that's why we are feeling types and not thinking types. I mean, some people talk about INFJs being introverted thinking types and talk about how strong our introverted intuition is. Uh, truth is, we have uh, teenager level introverted thinking. We don't have adult level introverted thinking, so our thinking is very primitive and uh, archaic even. It's uh, very basal and very childish. And a lot of time it's highly influenced by completely irrational beliefs about what other people expect from us. So during these times, uh, the, in the past coming weeks, uh, the past coming weeks, the past weeks, <laughs> I have been struggling with the feeling that I have been unworthy and that I haven't been good enough. And I've been feeling at work that I'm slipping, that I'm not able to keep up, that I'm not able to do everything I want to. And, you know, I have been. The truth be told, I have been. I haven't been able to answer every question that came in because there were so many questions that suddenly started coming in. I haven't been able to uh, perform at the level I expect to do at work because there has been so much work to do. 
I cannot be realistic about my own expectations because my expectations are not for what I can do for myself or what I normally do. I never compare my own actions or how good I am or how productive I am towards how productive I normally am. Because if I would do that, there wouldn't be a problem. I would see that, oh, I'm helping more people than ever. Oh, I'm doing more work than ever. I'm being more busy than ever. No, what I compare myself is, I compare myself against the total bigger picture of work that needs to be done. So I'm looking at everyone that needs to be helped. I'm looking at everyone who's struggling. And I'm looking at my ability to provide for everyone at this time. How is my ability to meet everyone's needs? It's not enough. So... I am doing more than what I usually do, but I'm not doing enough based on what I know needs to be done on a bigger scale. So I can see that a lot of work needs to be done in the world at this point because a lot of people are struggling. But I cannot recognize my own individual contributions because my focus is on general contributions, the contributions of everyone and everything that needs to be done. I don't know if that makes sense. I think another thing is becoming incredibly self-critical when I feel broken I also become extremely self-critical and I jump into these self-loading spirals and I have those and I have those today and I've had those quite a lot lately and so I go through these feelings of oh my god I'm such an idiot oh my god I'm such a failure oh my god I'm such a screw up oh I'm not I'm such a stupid person and that's such a difficult thing I really cannot deal with that because I really struggle with it I really go down these trails and I find it hard to control these thoughts when they begin because uh, well nowadays I'm better at it well I, nowadays what tends to happen is I say it and then afterwards I recognize that that's not something you should say to yourself because that's something you would never say to another person and that's something that you don't deserve that's something that's not fair I know when I'm not being fair on myself but these things they still happen you know they are natural instincts that come from uh, very biological drives that have to do with self-protection and with uh, you know uh, very basal primitive things inside every human you know everyone has uh, self-destructive tendencies and uh, tendencies to do bad things or to um, do harm or to do toxic or villainous behavior and um, that of course goes out also to myself and uh, I think um, INFJs have a Jesus complex and perhaps that's the theme of my video, the INFJ Jesus complex. Uh, what I want to say with that is uh, INFJs tend to think of themselves as Jesus. They tend to think of themselves or aspire towards being a kind of Jesus-like ideal, instilling people with a new vision giving understanding helping people gain forgiveness helping people uh, gain and develop empathy for one another helping people learn to care for one another you know i think infjs aspire towards that kind of an ideal and i think when you look at yourself you know when you look at your flow version of yourself you can see this person who is uh, confident in themselves and in their own empathy and confident in themselves and their ability to make themselves understood and to communicate with and connect with other people this person who is not afraid to talk to other people and to spread understanding and to talk about their vision or dreams with other people uh, this kind of an INFJ the INFJ in flow it seems like somebody who is just prepared to put themselves on the stake for their beliefs, somebody who is prepared to burn for what they care about, somebody who is uh, prepared to go into the desert for 40 days to uh, gain understanding and wisdom and insight and to learn about the world and to uh, dive deeper. This is kind of a person that, uh, you know, really uh, makes people feel understood and loved. And uh, so as an INFJ, it's easy to compare yourself against that ideal and to go, I'm not like that. I'm definitely not like that. I'm selfish. I'm mean. I sometimes speak out of ignorance. I get irrational. I uh, cause conflict and discord. People get upset about some things I do. People get hurt by things I do and say. Uh, people struggle with me sometimes. 
I sometimes uh, contribute to clannishness, you know, I create cliques, uh, uh, conflicts between different groups, I fail to bring diplomacy and peace around me, I um, am not able to uh, make the world a better place, my vision doesn't work out, what I thought in my head was going to be the right thing wasn't going to be the right thing. Uh, my ideas were wrong, I had misunderstood some things, I hadn't grasped some things, I wasn't ready. And um, yeah, that can lead to this feeling that uh, yeah, I'm a fraud. Not good enough, I'm broken, there must be something wrong with me. Well, you're not broken. You are merely hurting. Hurting is not the same thing as breaking and uh, humans are sturdy things and the mind is uh, an incredibly vast place with a lot of potential. Uh, the inner individual, the person, the soul is something very strong and a lot stronger than what you think. I have gone through a lot of times where I've surprised myself by how strong I could be or how strong I could uh, be, <laughs> really. Uh, I have um, astounded myself by discoveries I made, I've uh, um, been right about things, I've known things other people don't, I've figured things out, I have uh, been able to do truly yeah, amazing things that I'm truly proud of and you should be it too. So, I would like to end this video by a question. Write down in the comments down below something you did as an INFJ that's very INFJ that you are very proud of. Something you did for another person, something you did for yourself, something you uh, think is very important. Let me know in the comments below what is something you are really proud of that you have done as an INFJ. That's it for today. Thanks for this video and keep fighting the good fight for yourself, for your own mental health and personal growth and keeping true to yourself no matter what the world throws at you. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.